right here. Okay, we're on? Yeah. All righty. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, we are on here today. We're actually going to be doing stories of the Odiya today because uh, I'm out tomorrow and we will be uh, essentially uh, doing third stories of the Odia today and we have a special guest today will be coming in okay inshallah ta'ana and uh, talking to us but until then we will be ta'ala and looking at uh, a book called Sifat As-Safwa Sifat As-Safwa is a great book if you haven't heard of it but let's wait until everyone shows up first of all see how we are doing with everybody and who's logging in and who's not Okay, let's see who we got here. Uh, Alright, Harrison, Harrison Mean on YouTube. It's like a rivalry here between the YouTubers. Why are some people on YouTube and other people on Instagram? Ryan, what's the wisdom? Well, one thing I realized, mm. I don't know if this has anything to do with it. Yeah. Last two days, for some reason, my, I haven't been able to look at the YouTube comments. Yeah. I don't know why they're not coming up on here. I have to figure that out over the weekend. Oh, yeah. But maybe it's the, where the answers are going from, are coming from, where the questions are coming from the most. Well, I mean, I usually go 50-50. Right? Personally, I would go on YouTube. I think YouTube. YouTube. I, I think Instagram is yeah. lame. Personally. Yeah. YouTube. All right, we got a whole bunch of people here. Let's open up with this stuff. You guys know about Sifat is Safwa? It's what we're going to be reading here from. Sifat is Safwa. Sifat is Safwa is an excellent book by Ibn Jawzi. And we're waiting here for everyone to show up, and then we're going to read from Sifat to Sifat. Yusuf Niazi Mason Apes. For some reason I like that name. Mason Apes, it's like a Hollywood name. Alright, well, it's not, my Sifat of Sifat is not coming up, so we will have to begin it tomorrow, but to, today we're doing a little bit of current affairs and a little bit of stories of the Odia. And we're going to begin by a uh, story today that came in, in terms of Muslim uh, news, alright, about PSG midfielder Idris Gaia. I, you saw that I posted on this. Idris Gaia is, I don't know anything about, you know, soccer, but he plays for PSG, right? Uh, I guess PSG is a big deal. PSG is basically Paris Saint-Germain. And he missed his club's game against Montpellier on Saturday because he refused to wear the LGBT promoting jersey. Yeah, Sheikh Nassar, tafadda. Salam. Sheikh Nassar, you're going to be presenting. Right now? Yeah. Well, after I finish reading the story, you're presenting from stories of the ODF. Really? That's your mic. Is his mic on? That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. He just okay. told me right now, and I yeah. said I... I <laughs> Lift it up real quick. There you go. Lift it all the way so it's like very close to your mouth. And then you're going to be presenting. I have no idea what I'm presenting, but okay. Yeah. And think you have uh, about 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, to think about... Um, Story, any story of the ODL. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I like to put people on the spot, see how their agility is. Okay. Uh, hey guys, is it is it breaking up? I'm watching it on YouTube right here. I don't see it's breaking up. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Huh? Yes, it's good. So Idris Gaia, he plays for Senegal. Senegal national team. Okay. He's a devout Muslim. I'm trying to read it as if how they would read it. <laughs> How they would say that. Other, and he traveled and he plays with PSG, but he did not play in the game. The manager says he had to leave the team sheet for personal reasons, and he's not injured. 
What are the personal reasons? Okay. They wore LGBT shirts. Because you know that the, in soccer, for sales, and I guess for fun, uh, they're always wearing shirts. They mm. make a ton of different jerseys. Right? Any day to get a special jersey to be able to sell it. Okay. Was it Instagram or YouTube? Breaking a bit. They, everyone's telling me it's breaking up a bit. Is my mic? Anything on the... Yes, audio breaking up. Uh, you just... We'll just... Right, is it just... No, it's not even right. Right, we'll fix it, John. But they're all wearing um, LGBT striped shirts. And... Uh, the players' numbers and the armbands are all part of International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia. Okay. And on this day, they all wore these LGBT shirts, but Guy is not not playing. He's not wearing it. Some people, they say he has stomach problems. Yes, yeah, get a vomit from the concept, right? His representatives denied that he boycotted the fixture last season, but they have yet, yet to release a statement on his absence this Saturday. Listen, just come out, you know, and say, this is it. I'm not letting this. Mm. Kick, him, kick, kick him out of the league. Find me. Whatever. This is a day and age you might lose anything for the sake of your team. You never know. Okay? His representative denied that he, he is boycotting. Gaia, I guess that's how you pronounce his name, he's 32 years old. He started his career in Senegal, Senegal, before joining French, the French club Lille. He then moved to England and he played with Aston Villa, then he played with Everton, and now he's on the League One champion, Paris Saint-Germain. And I guess what's his name is also on that team. He's a player that I'm not a big fan of. I don't think he's a big game player. What's his name? He's considered the best player in sports in soccer right now. Messi? Nobody in the room of five guys here, <laughs> Ronaldo. Americans. Ronaldo. 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 Messi. It's Messi. It's okay. Messi. See, Messi to me, he's not a big game player. He's the most talented. He is not a big game player. If you have a gun to your head for one soccer game, Messi's not the guy I'm going to go on. I'll go on Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo, right? So there are big game players. You know when someone, he's a very good when things are going easy. But when the pressure's on, he tightens up and he can't do it. Just can't, he can't do it. Guy made his debut for Senegal in 2011. In 2018, he played for Senegal at the FIFA World Cup. Guy helped his country win after the African Cup of Nations last year in 2022. Okay? So that's Guy. Now, New York Times um, has posted it. He is going to become, in the for the left, Hitler, for doing this. The left will treat him like Hitler. Okay? Tariq Panja, a Muslim, is writing this article. They got a Muslim to write it too. Whenever it's like news about Hindus, they get a Hindu to write it. Mm -hmm. So that he could, he could say something without being called like bigot or something. Like yeah, so they get a Muslim to write That's what the New York Times, I notice they do this oftentimes. They get someone from that ethnic group or whatever, that minority group, to write the article so that nobody could attack them. Okay? How are we looking on the sound, though? Is it's good, okay? Yeah. It, so when we when we do the liquor, we're going to have to pause for a little bit so I can upload all the things, and we'll go. Because no 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 trying to upload it at the same time. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Idris Guy traveled to south, south, to Montpellier, with his Paris Saint-Germain teammates on Saturday, but he wound up watching it from the stands. He was not injured. He had to leave the team for personal reasons. Listen. If you did a, uh, a, a Blue Lives Matter day for sports, and a guy says, I'm sitting this out, because they're, not, they're doing something that's bad for humanity. Mm -hmm. They're killing all these African Americans, right? Mm -hmm. That's the claim. Well, of course, obviously, many are. Some are, right? There's the whole bad apples argument mm -hmm. versus the whole institution is bad. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into that debate, but let's say someone did. And someone sat out because I don't believe in this cause. They make him a hero. So the left 
we should not listen to anything they have to say. Unfortunately, they have a lot of power. But anything that they have to say is should be absolutely irrelevant. Right? It should be. Because they have their set of beliefs, and they spin it as if this is like a logical conclusion. Right? We also have our beliefs. But we also say, look, our, our law is going to be applied differently to a Muslim than to a non-Muslim. Right? We're not going to treat you the same. You don't believe in it. So, but you can't be a non-believer to Western liberalism. How can I be a kafir of Western liberalism? Because if I'm a kafir in Islam, I know that I have certain rights, certain things are going to be against me, and certain things are going to be my rights, right? And certain things I can't do. If I'm a kafir in Islam, I know I can't go to Mecca, right? Okay, fine. I'll make myself not want to go to Mecca, if you're a kafir. Uh, I can go into this Muslim country and trade. I can do tijara with the Muslim. Can right, so I know where my parameters are. If I'm a kafir in Islam, in vis a vis Islam, mm -hmm. I need to know, yeah, you are Western liberals. What is my position towards you? What are my rights and what am I? What's against me and what's for me as a kafir of your faith? Mm -hmm. All your faith in alphabet soup and elemental PQ community, all of these operations of yours and these beliefs of yours. What is the role of the kafir? Am I to be, because we know I can't steal the money of a kafir. I have to treat him in a certain way. I'm not talking about a muharib here. There's a difference between a kafir and a muharib. Muharib, this guy's fighting you, right? A nation, like let's say the the uh, Smitas, the uh, uh, Crusaders. Well, the Crusaders were, were never called Christians by the Arabs. Why? The Muslims never called them Christians. Because the Crusaders did not represent to them all Christians. There were Arab Christians, Byzantine Christians, right? Yemeni Christians, East African Christians, all in Darul Islam, and we know how to deal with them. And they know how to deal with us. So when the Crusaders came around, they're like, what kind of Christian is this? It's cr crazy Christians, like terrorist Christians, right? So they just called them Franks, okay? Because they were French. So the Crusade came out of France, and they're still have harboring that in their blood. So my question is, in our Sharia, we, we, we have a legal status of the one who's fighting you. Okay, let's say in the Western Hemisphere, that's ISIS. Then there's the Christian who is not fighting us, the Byzantine Christians. We have law with them, right? So what about the Muslims who are, like, let's say, living outside? Uh, we need to know. Well, of course, we're never going to get an answer. This is all just like... We're never going to get an answer. But we are the kuffar towards this Western liberal ideology. So I need you guys to give me a law. What's my hatuq? What's for me, what's against me? How can I just announce to you that I don't believe in a whole chunk of your stuff? Could you imagine a, 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 a Hindu? He's in Darul Islam. Time for Dhuhr comes. He doesn't pray. Time for Asa. Ramadan. Oh, my love, you unbelievable. It's like, what is it? He doesn't believe in any of it. Why are you gasping and shocked at every step? No. He just says, I'm Jew. So therefore, I know from everything in Islam he's not going to practice. How do I announce myself to be a, a, a disbeliever in all these, these value statements of Western liberalism, right? There's no way, right? It, so it's a very unrefined system, to be honest with you. It's an unrefined philosophy where there's no way to actually state what the, what definitively what is your guy's beliefs. Every day there's something new. Like, I can't keep up with the terms anymore. What is the position of the non-believer in this? Okay. What are my rights? What are my responsibilities? We will never get that in the list. Right? And that's why it's a lose, lose to live. For us, it's just going to be one challenge over another to an unhealthy degree. Okay, let me check the comments on um, Insta before we continue. Maham is here, Arpai Fatima is here, uh, Khalaway is here. All right, nobody's yet commenting, so let's go back to read to finish this article in the New York Times. But you, does, does what I'm saying make sense? YouTubers, is what I'm saying makes sense? Like, we need to know what our position is. 
It's like every time that he's going to go against, someone goes against the trans agenda. It's call it what you want, believe what you want, but the people who are going to go against it need to have a status. What's the status? Are we going to boycott them, kill them, make sure they're just like completely extinct? So Gaia has not commented on his absence, and he doesn't have to. You don't have to incriminate yourself, right, uh, 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 like from their perspective. But French news media reports, which were first to report the reason for guys missing the game, quickly noted he also missed the same awareness fixture last season. He had stomach issues last season. Like I said, he, he would have stomach issues. He was to vomit at the concept that you're forcing me to wear this shirt. Okay. Activists were quick to denounce his decision to wear the jersey. I'm telling you, oh people of the West. There are believers in Western liberalism and all your causes, and there are kuffar of Western liberalism. We are the kuffar of your of your beliefs. We don't believe what you believe. You don't believe what we believe. So we have a lot of believers. You guys need to have a law for the non-believers, right? Is that making sense? Yeah, it makes a lot yeah. of sense. So, <clears throat> Rogue Direct which is the group that fights homophobia in sports, uh, he says he has to explain himself. Wait a second. Did he make a homophobic comment? No. He just refused to wear your cross. Right? Your cross is the flag. A, a dead for the fallen burning church in France. Didn't, wasn't there a church that burned down in France a couple years ago? It was some epic building from history. So that burned down. What if they had a day in which they're commemorating this wonderful piece of history? Okay? And they said, we're all going to wear a shirt with a cross on it. Okay? Basically, the Jews and the Muslims and the Hindus, they don't believe in this. Right? They don't believe in this. Why should they follow this? So, in the same way, this is a belief that this behavior is upright and good. That what you're doing with your private part and inserting it into another man... You guys think it's great. We don't think it's great. Right? So why are you forcing this belief on us? No, I, if someone said, okay, listen, stop calling people names and don't beat people up and don't kill them. Fine, we're all for that. It's against our Sharia anyway, right? To do that as fellow citizens, right? So how would that be an issue? He's not like he did any of that. Okay? So that's the thing uh, where now if you don't support it, it's an inquisition. This is a gay inquisition. Because you have to support it now. It's not the guy never made a slur to anybody and they kicked him off the team. Right? He doesn't even want to wear, he just doesn't want to wear the letters or the, the colors. If we had a day for the terrorist attack against Muslims, it would be ludicrous to think that we're going to expect people to wear Islamic symbols. We wouldn't. Right? Nor would we want it. Uh, for PSG, the issue of support for gay rights and anti-homophobia efforts is a particular sensitive one. The team is owned by Qatar. Wow. <laughs> Through its sovereign wealth funds. Qatar itself has come under scrutiny amid concerns of the gay community about their safety when the World Cup takes place in the Gulf country later this year. What safety? You think Muslims are going to go around you know, beating up gays? Mm. Muslims don't even pray five times a day. Half the Ummah doesn't pray five times a day, let alone care about the subject. Homosexuality is against the law in Qatar, as it in other countries of the Gulf. They're allowed to have their beliefs. What's wrong with that? That's their belief, right? There's a lot of stuff against the law here. Polygamy is against the law here, right? It's a sexual act. Same-sex acts are also illegal in Gaia's native Senegal, where ultra-conservative groups have burned rainbow flags during public protests against homosexuality. PSG has not commented on Gaia beyond the comments made uh, after Sunday's game. Club senior officials are currently in Qatar, according to a team representative. Ryan, we might as well change the title of this right? to uh, Gaia. I don't know if you could change the title halfway through. Okay. So the club senior officials are currently in Qatar. Okay discussing what actions, if any, will be taken against Gaia. And his contract with PSG, PSG expires, expires again. at the end of the next month. He's not getting the new contract, for sure. sure. Is he is good? He I don't, I don't even, know. Nobody even know. Nobody even know. We don't even know who he is, right? Except as a Muslim brother. 
Hey, uh, Fett, is it? Hadi, Hadi. Hadi. I get it. <laughs> so like it's been a year. Hadi, do you know who Idris Guy is? Idris Guy. Do you know him? No. Idris Guy. No. Is he good? Okay. He doesn't know. How do you know? No, I'm saying, I'm saying to these guys, is he good? I have no idea. I think um, one thing. Um, am I muted, Brian? Yeah. Uh, I think one thing, if it wasn't discussed already, is like you know, you mentioned it before that whether or not homosexuality is a religion or not, and you know, it by Western definitions, what is a religion? It's a set of metaphysical claims. Yeah. By definition, a metaphysical claim is something that cannot be proven by the Thank senses. You. Thank you. And you know, you look at religion. Yeah. Uh, or rather, you look at homosexuality. Claims about gender cannot be, you know, there's no, there's no science experiment that you can do to claim. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a value statement. You cannot do a demonstration in front of us. Uh, if anything, the, even the gen, yeah, the, the idea that you're, you're, you have a gender inside your head that is different from your biology, right? Even they have to admit that all your DNA is either male or female. Mm -hmm. But the idea, this idea that there's a gender in your head. That is a belief, right. right? You cannot demonstrate that force. We can demonstrate that every ounce of your DNA is male or female, mm -hmm. right? So all of these are beliefs. About wearing a symbol, I remember in Sharqun Aqaid in Asafiya, towards the end, they mentioned that even wearing that Hindu thread that they wear yeah. as a gesture of their religion, that's kufar. Uh, we agree so, with that. Similarly, Will, a person wears a cross. Exactly. Can you, can you tell somebody to wear a cross in their society? I think we're all, everyone knows, you can't tell someone to wear a cross. Yeah. Like, we can't celebrate Notre Dame. Yeah. Okay, so Notre Dame, the, the building burnt down. Can we all celebrate Notre Dame by wearing a cross? No. You can't. You can say Paris Historical Artifacts Day, whatever. Fine. Yeah. It's neutral. Wearing a cross, you can't. Yeah. We have to, what we're, what we're saying is that metaphysical values cannot be forced on someone. I had n said nothing against alphabet soup, mm -hmm. right? Community. He said nothing against them. So he's silent, right? But for not supporting it and wearing its colors, they are going to end his career. And it's so crazy that Europe is known to be, you know, like so anti anything symbolic, right? Yeah. Nothing is sacred to them. Exactly. Except the new set of things that are sacred. Thank you. Everything is, nothing is sacred to the French mm -hmm. secular um, uh, ideology. Everything is, right, they want to break these sanctities, mm -hmm. except for their new set of beliefs, which we got to tell you, it's your religion. It is a deen. There, for us, a religion does not mean that you have to believe in something. Uh, hey, someone down here is cooking some really nice bread. You smell that? <laughs> uh, she cooks at the oddest hours, to be honest. At two o'clock, and she's cooking a full dinner. But... Uh, a religion does not have to be that you are praying, bowing to something that you believe is in the heavens. Mm -hmm. Right? Or has a heavenly element, like another world. A religion is anything that dictates your behavior that is metaphysical. That means I cannot demonstrate it in front of me. Right? So, for example, when people tell, tell me, is it shit to believe that a gemstone can cure my wrist? We're saying no, because this is something that is of the world, right? The gemstone, mm -hmm. a non-religious thing, just a gemstone. They're saying it cures your, uh, the achiness of your wrist. Mm -hmm. See, um, we, we, no, it's not shit at all. It's just weak science. It's a claim, it's a scientific claim that nobody's been able to demonstrate, right? So it's like if I give you a pill and say, take this pill, it will physically cure you. I'm not saying that some God is going to come down and cure you, right? Say it's weak science. That's all it is, mm -hmm. right? All of these fads and, and and diets and stuff. There's nothing wrong with it in Islamic perspective. It's just weaker. It's weak and sci scientifically until it's been demonstrated, and they do these these experiments where they actually can demonstrate it, right? So that's what we mean by a demonstrable claim versus a metaphysical claim. Metaphysical claim. You can bring all the evidence you want, but at the end of the day, there is a leap of faith. And the question is whether that leap of faith is easy, right, or not. So, for example, what is more likely that created the honeycomb and the human being and the human brain and the bird and all that stuff? A random set of accidents or 
an intelligent, a, a knowledgeable creator, mm -hmm. right? In both cases, there is Iman, right? But one is far off from being likely. So much so that one physicist, astronomer in the past, he said that, imagine you take a monkey, you sit him at a typewriter, right? Yeah. And you wait until he puts together the entire collection of Shakespeare's works, right? How long would you be waiting? Essentially, you're waiting forever. It's never going to happen, right? It will never happen. Mm -hmm. Because if you sat an intelligent human being down and said, type away Shakespeare's work while looking at the works, right? He's going to make a mistake somewhere. So it will never happen. So an accident cannot produce perfection. And what we see from the honey, just the honeycomb. Study the value of this little creature to our existence on Earth. There is probably no living creature more important to us in the pollination and everything else than the bee. That's why they made the bee movie out of it. That's where I learned this fact, right? That uh, if you eliminated the bees within a few months, human population would start to, like everything in the world would start to initiate, the initiation of its collapse. Look it up, okay? Hey, uh, anyone got a, a smartphone to look up? If bees were dis disappeared, hey, Heather, you're not doing anything. Uh, look it up for us. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> right? Well, you're going to give us a story about it if we get into it. But look, I think we got into something nice here. Right? Okay, so this is the importance of the bee. Mm -hmm. Are you telling me that this is all an accident? It's a joke mm -hmm. to say this is all an accident. To, the, the denial of intelligent design is the dumbest. It's, it's the biggest belief. It's awkward to me. It's a big belief. This stuff is all beliefs. Okay. Also, um, I just had like a question. Um, to kind of take the, you know, what we were talking about earlier yeah. a little bit deeper. You know, from our perspective as Muslims, you know, deen is not just religion and a set of beliefs as yep. well, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's countless examples like uh, Hadith Jibril where the Prophet Sallallahu he tells us that deen is both our beliefs, our iman, but it's also our actions as well, right? Yep. So what is the meaning of deen in, like, as we understand it as Muslims? Because, you know, it seems to me as if actions also have to do with your religion as well. Yeah. A deen is that, uh, uh, a belief and a deen is that which directs your actions, all right? That which directs your actions, right? And that's, when, when you look at the Prophet Sallallahu and he said to the uh, son of Hatim al Adi ibn Hatim, he recited to him the Qur'an, in which stated, you have taken your ahbar wa ruhban arbaban min dunillah, God's other than Allah. Adi ibn Hatim, who was a Christian, he said, Master of Allah, we never worship them besides Allah. We never took them as gods. He said, if the Ruhban, if the if the priest and the Bible says the opposite, who in, did you follow? Like, what did your community do? He said, no, we follow the priests. He said, that's ibad. Tilka ibadatukum iya. Because it dictates your actions. So that which dictates my actions is my deen. In, in the Sharia, Sharia, in terms of the millet system, like when if when Muslims ruled, they needed they 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 you were classified not by where you were born. Like where do we classify people in America? Where were you born? If you were born one mile, if you were born one inch out of the Texas border, right? And your twin and then they dragged the mother over inside the Texas border and your twin brother was born inside the Texas border, right? And you have like uh, an American uh, officer witnessing all this. One is a Mexican citizen, one is a non-American, Mexican citizen, one is a American citizen. That's the system that you guys like, right? That's a system of nationalism. So one set of laws applies to the second twin, a different set of laws applies to the first twin. In Islam... We, the laws apply to you based on the laws you choose, the value system you choose. So the milla system is that a milla is a group, a milieu, essentially. You say, oh, Muslims, X, Y, Z is a Christian. I'm a Christian, let's say, they say. We say, okay, the Christian law will apply to you in all civil matters. If you do something in public, a crime, we will, that then 
our law will apply to you. If you have a dispute with a Muslim, our law will dis apply to you. As long as your issue applies, is personal, or is between Christians, a Christian judge will judge between you by your book. That Christian judge will be appointed by the Christian leader. So the Byzantine Christians has a leader. The whatever Christian sect, another Christian group, has a leader. The Khalifa, the Ottoman Empire, only deals with that Christian leader. And he says, listen, here's the deal. You rule by your law amongst your people. You can live, you can have your own town if you want. And you could rule that entire town on your law. On one condition. You don't raise a sword up against us, our state. Right? That's the deal. It's a wonderful deal. So you're living in your own mil mil milieu. This is more liberal than the West. Right? In the West, you are guys are forcing one set of laws on everybody. Laws have a roots in a value system. I don't believe in this value system, so I don't believe in this law. Right? We never apply our marriage laws, our inheritance laws on the Christians. You marry as a Christian. If you have, if they have a town, that emir, you have your own laws, right? Some guy did zina in public with a woman, you judge it yourself by your own book. You want to corrupt your own book, corrupt it all you want. But we have organized the society based on the laws that will apply to you, which you are deciding. That Christian says, no, 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 I'm a Jew today. Okay, go to the Jewish quarter, and the Jewish ruler, there is a Jewish rabbi will be appointed by the Khalifa to manage the Jewish community and to rule by that Jewish law okay, that you all believe in. So what the, in the Islamic State, what it needed was, we need your book of law. That's what we need. We need your book. What is your book of law? So what is the woke Bible? We need the woke Bible, right? Today, in today's world, it would be the book of woke, right? We need the book of woke so we could say, well, okay, how do you guys choose your priests? Who is the LeBron James? Okay, we can assign him as the woke priest. I mean, isn't he like the biggest proponent of this stuff? I don't know, but he's always saying stay woke, blah, blah, blah. Maybe he only means it for racial matters. Because woke originally started as a fine thing. Right? It started as a fine thing, as a, as a awareness of racism. We're fine with that. But it has evolved into something else. Oh, okay. The women's soccer player. <laughs> purple hair all right women soccer player you are the priestess of the woke community we will deal with you right elizabeth warren elizabeth War <laughs> okay you're g gonna be the so our problem is native and, american politics yeah we're, we're never gonna <laughs> we are never going to solve this problem we're never going to have an official, final, one and once and for all book of woke, book of wokeness, where we can declare ourselves, we can read it, declare ourselves kuffar of this book. What is the law of the kafir for this book, right? For this book. There's no law for us. They're going to wipe us out. That's really what they want to do, right? We will get to stories of the Odiat right now. Okay, as, as soon as we finish... Um, the this section on the the Pope, uh, the the wokes. PSG is by far the biggest team in France. It attracts outsized interests at home and abroad because of its star-studded roster, which this year produced the club's eighth French championship in the past ten years. They got Mbappe, Messi. Okay. Mbappe's got to retake his shahada for wearing this shirt. I think he's a Muslim, by the way. Isn't Mbappe a Muslim? Yeah, because what's written in Aqidah books is that when you wear symbols like this, it's takdeeb of the Qur'an. That's what it is, yeah. So it's, the, certain actions can put you outside of Islam. Yeah. According to the team source, with knowledge of PSE&G's PSE internal uh, conversation over the weekend, PSG. PSENG is our <laughs> electric company. PSENG is our electric company. PSG is the soccer team. Okay. Uh, they told Guy that the team was committed to the campaign and has no options but to wear the same jersey as the rest of the team if he wanted to play. When he decided he would not, he was sent to the stands for the game. Okay. So, uh, I don't. How is this different from kneeling? The U.S. flag is a major symbol, yeah. right? 
Okay. I'm with Gaia. Final questions on Gaia. Uh, book of uh, The Book of Woke and, and the concept that we need we need the woke group to tell us what is our position with them when we're rejectors of their beliefs. Of course, it's never going to happen, right? Hey, Hadi, did you get the issue about the, uh, the bees? About the bees, right? Yeah. So, like, what would happen if all the bees went extinct? What would happen to the human population? Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Okay. If, if you removed bees from the whole world, you went to the bee file and you right click delete and there are no bees in the entire world anymore so i found an article on bbc so it says we may lose all the plants that bees pollinate all of the animals that eat those plants and so up on the food chain which means a world without bees could struggle to sustain the global human population of seven billion our supermarkets would have half the amount of fruits and vegetables so our fruits and vegetables would be cut in half within how long does it say um no, it doesn't say. doesn't say. Yeah. All right, folks. That's our, that was our current affairs of the day. So we are now done with current affairs. We've covered it. And uh, I think that the um, uh, halal humor here is telling us that, ironically, it's not Gaia. It's not Idris Gaia. It's Idris Gay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But um, that's the irony of it, I guess. But we're done with that current affairs section. And I think it's a very important question that we need to start driving the, uh, the dialogue here by asking them, what is our position regarding you? Are you going to kill us all? Are you going to, like, the, the LGBT, is this going to be an inquisition? That if we don't support it, what's going to happen to us? Because that's what an inquisition is. It's one thing to backlash against someone who speaks out against you, right? Fine. I understand that. If you have a law, if you have a country, and, and New Jersey, New York, California, they uh, 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 Washington State, they declare themselves woke states. We have a choice. We can stay. We can leave. If we stay, we're going to ask our fuqaha, what do we do? All right? Okay, you can't speak out publicly against alphabet soup? Fine. But once it becomes an inquisition, that's when they're forcing you to support it. Just like the Christians in Spain, force the Muslims to become Muslim, uh, to become Christian, right? That's, in, that's what an inquisition is. The Wahhabis. Is Allah above the throne? You have to answer it now. Before that, you stay silent on it. You save your neck. Now, they had an inquisition. Is he above the throne or not? Right? And you have to say yes. If you don't say yes, right? He has a hand, he has other limbs, he's above the throne. If you don't say yes, off with your head. Or, like the other, the Madhkaris, Right? Uh, do you denounce Ibn so-and-so and Abu so-and-so? If you don't denounce them, divorce your wife out of the community. That's an inquisition. When you force people to talk, okay? When you force people to talk about things, right? So that's the difference between a law of a nation that you have to respect, whether you like it or not, and an inquisition. And that's why we as a shadow, we should never do an inquisition. We don't do inquisitions. Mm -hmm. Every Muslim, his default is he's bari min bida. Right? Unless he shows otherwise. Once he shows otherwise, then we can ask them. Right? We can ask them. Like, you're wearing this symbol. Is that... Are you this or that? You're praying on a rock. Are you this, that, or the other? We can, we can ask because you brought it to us. Right? So now we know how to deal with you. All right. So that's it. That's the end of this. Um, let us go to our teacher, Sheikh Nassar. He is going to, he studied four years in Bilad al-Hind, Pakistan or Hind? Yeah, I did the eight-year course. Eight-year year in where? In Lahore. Lahore in Lahore, Pakistan. Pakistan. What's the school called? Jamia Nizamiya. Jamia Nizamiya. Eight years, mashallah. That's, time flew by, subhanAllah. Yeah, 2014. 2014, 2014 subhanAllah. 2014. All right, now he will present us with our stories of the awliya portion. And you're 20, 10, 20 minutes, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 10, 20 minutes. I don't know how long we're going to talk. I still don't have a gauge. So no. I didn't realize. Oh, okay. I'm now you're on camera. But before you do it, let's do our sponsors while you uh, uh, get ready. The camera ready. First sponsor. Mecca Books. Mecca Books. Get yourselves your books on MeccaBooks.com. And um, 
we inshallah hope to start opening a on-site bookstore here in New Jersey in partnership with Mecca Books. Ryan's cracking up, but I don't know why. We're going to have to find out. Secondly, our second sponsor is Professors One to One. This this tutoring system is really good. I have seen kids go from like mediocre grades to straight streak of hundreds, hundred, 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 hundred. Hedy, if you need Professors One to One, you can sign up with them. If you need to be a tutor, you can sign up. Secondly, thirdly, okay, um, Patreon dot com backslash Safina Society. All right. These are our sponsors, okay, for the program. And our sponsors are probably always changing, but these are our sponsors now. And let's turn it over now to our brother Nisa. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alamin. Wa salatu islam wa ala rasulim kareem. So at first I didn't know the format of this at all. Mm-hmm. I walked in. Ryan told me, he said, uh, you're going to join the live stream. You sent me the message. I didn't understand what you yeah. meant. Then I come up and now I'm just sitting here. But I've been. I love to do things on the fly. Okay, we'll see <laughs> how I fare then. But I've been away eight years and I'm still not comfortable uh, being in the spotlight. I got to get more comfortable with it. Uh, having the camera pointing at me right now is sort of strange. But in, in regards to the topic of the ODA, personally, in the course that we did, we don't do any tasawwuf text, which is something that I noticed is different in the Desi world than it is amongst the Arab world because I went to Egypt and Turkey for a few months. Over there they teach the Sawuf as a science amongst their course. In Pakistan they don't. Sometimes they teach it as a break. Probably, it's a yeah. Thing to study, yeah. But as a break, like every day yeah. for a half hour they'll read, yeah. or take a rawha and read from Ihya Ulum al yeah. or yeah. things like that. Or uh, Al Hikm al Yeah. And yeah. the class is usually a lot lighter. The teacher usually exactly. doesn't stick to script as yeah. much. Uh, but in Pakistan, they don't teach tasawwuf like that. I remember here when uh, I came a few years ago when there was a conversation about karamat and awliya and mm-hmm. a specific wali who uh, descended upon New Jersey. I'm, being, I'm joking, by the way, right now. <laughs> uh, and at that time, I found it strange the way people have conversations on awliya and karamat because that's not how the scholarly class talks about awliya. The objective is not karamat. That's something that sometimes is a consequence if uh, a, a certain God-fearing person prays to Allah in a certain way and it manifests itself. But they don't seek to do karamat. Uh, so because of that, when, when I'm gauging a person, I'm not looking for something glamorous about him course, in that you regard. Can, you, you can't assess somebody based upon yeah. if they have miracles or not. That's absurd. Yeah. Yeah. That's why if I'm gonna if, if someone asks me about it, most of the people that I saw because in Pakistan you have you have different classes amongst the religious class. You have the teachers who teach in the madaris, they're unknown for the most part. You have the khutaba class, the speakers who are very popular. Du'at. The du'at, yeah. yeah. So in, in the Arab world they say du'at. We say khatib, hazrat, okay. uh, khutaba. And then you have the Peer class, which is basically a dynasty system. A lot of times, they're only in their position because they're the father. They're the sons of their fathers. There's no qualification behind it. That's the class that basically uses terminologies like karamat, awliya, things like that to basically hook the audience. And because of that, a lot of the audience is hooked by it. So instead of learning the religion, they don't learn the religion because if they allow their muridin to learn the religion they're not going to be their murids anymore because one yeah. of the criteria and one criteria that the, the great Imam Ahmad al Khan, a criteria he has for a person to be a sheikh of a tariqa is you got to be knowledgeable. Most of these people are jahil. Even uh, the leaders. Especially the leaders. Subhanallah. You because know, they're leading it. Subhanallah. They're you more accountable. You know that um, it's funny that they say the faqih. Yeah. He produces when he produces, he produces yeah. his competition, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah, 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 yeah. the the the, the peer, he yeah. produces. You're a disciple forever. Yep. Right? Our teachers say that all the time. They say we should have become peers yeah. because murids never compete with you. Yeah. The students we produce, they become big scholars in their own right. Yeah. And then when they come to our masjid, they come to our masjid with protocol. 
Yeah. Whereas Adab dictates that when you come to your teacher, you're supposed to come with humility. Yeah. So that's a very so common phrase in Pakistan. When when I started my studies, one of the uh, the sons of a great scholar in Pakistan, his name's Alama Abdul Hakim Sharf Al Qadri, rahimahullah taala. His son was a classmate of my cousin. So before I went to Pakistan, you know Imam Atif. Yeah. Uh, so in North he, Carolina. From North Carolina. So yeah. he studied in Pakistan. Same. Uh, you you studied in Jamiat. I studied, so from 2007 to 2010, I studied in Jamia Nizamiya. Did I he study there? The course. No, he didn't study there. Okay. He studied in uh, Jamia Muhammadiyah Gauthia, okay. which is in Beira. It's okay. the famous scholar, Speed Karam Shah Al-Azhari, was an Azhari scholar as okay. well. So he studied there. But I studied there three years, couldn't complete it, came back, studied at Rutgers, and then went again. But the last eight years, I studied one-on-one from Jamia Nizami teachers, yeah. and then I graduated. I did the Dora Adith there. But that, that great scholar's son, when I came eight years ago and I was taking advice from him on how to study in Pakistan, he said, make sure you collect uh, different khilafatim, uh, they say in Urdu, khilafat, from different uh, peed figures in Pakistan. Mm. And I laughed at it. I said, no, I'm here to study. I'm not here to become a peed at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I was a position holder in the madrasa I studied at. Yeah. And now there's no value to what I'm doing. And that's potentially how he saw the people treat him. He said, if I became a peer, I would have been given a lot of respect. So unfortunately, that's what people are attracted to. And that's why the, the figure who came a few years ago, yeah. that's why people were completely attracted to him. Yeah. I saw him the first time and immediately I knew something was off. But He's, that's uh, What, what uh, Sheikh Nassar is talking about is that we had uh, a, a supposed peer, Sheikh yeah. Tariqa, yeah. come down and bring karamat and talk about stuff and... Yeah. Uh, make people's heart beat and stuff like that uh, and all sorts of stuff that it took, it nabbed everyone who did not really have grounding in knowledge. Yeah. The guys who had grounding in knowledge yeah. didn't even flinch, yeah. right? And I was fooled yeah. because we don't have this complete segmentation yeah. of peers and fuqaha. Yeah. Right? We really don't anymore. have that. Usually you, the scholars are the shoes. The, the scholars are also oftentimes, not always, but yeah. oftentimes the khatibs. Yeah. Like a, khat, a good khatib is oftentimes he's a scholar too, like yeah. Sharawi, yeah. Kishk. These yeah. were fuqaha. Yeah. But they were, the, they were all, ha, yeah. like Habib Omar is a khatib. But right? see, in Pakistan, the reason there's a, a schism between the two is because yeah. it became a dynasty system. Ah, I see. So when the bead becomes very popular, he has a lot of rich mudideen donate a lot of land to him. Ah, I see. Yeah. Now the peers, the khalifa or the, the person who's a scholar that he deems worthy, He's not going to get all the land because the son has his eyes on the land. So the son, I, I know a few cases where the son fights with the father and he says, before you pass away, you better inaugurate me into this. Because if you don't, then there, there are going to be problems. So he does that. So in Pakistan, it's a dynasty system. You know, the only function that this has yeah. is if they're doing services like feeding the poor. The, right? Yeah, that's, that's the, the only original. function. Like that's yeah. the only function. But yeah. You can call they yourself don't. Pir Naqshabandi, yeah. Pir Shazli, Pir whatever you want to call it, Sheikh yeah. Shiyukh. Yeah. If you don't have the actual uh, 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 content, yeah. right? If Allah has not guided you to be something, you're, yeah. it's just empty, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's meaningless. Yeah. No, they don't have that at all. They live lavish lifestyles. They're not practicing. Are Many they of guiding? Them don't pray. No, not at all. They just have functions. Uh, I remember years ago uh, on TV, I was watching this very famous beat in Pakistan. Uh, QTV, QTV is a very popular Pakistani Islamic channel, has a lot of scholars on it too. But there was this event in which you had speeches and you had uh, Nat Khani or Nasheeds, and the Peer was sitting there. And I joked with my mom and I said, Oh, he's like the decoration piece on yeah, the stage. Yeah. And she became very angry because they still, they, that's the grip that they have over the masses in Pakistan. And she was saying, Be careful what you say because something's bad is going to happen Lannis. to you. But that's what they do. They they present themselves at different functions. They sit on these lavish chairs. They have people, lines of that, hundreds and hundreds of people kissing their hands. That's all they do. There's no teaching. They don't teach anything. Because the moment they start teaching, it goes back to that thing you mentioned earlier. The moment you teach someone, he becomes your competitor. Exactly. They don't yeah. want you to become their competitor. So yeah. they're going to keep you into that. But for me, the reason... I didn't buy into uh, that that person who came here is 
People who are righteous never brag about themselves. Mm, ever. Subhanallah. They never talk about their karamah. Yeah. How obnoxious is it yeah. to speak highly of yourself? No yeah. one speaks highly of themselves. By teachers, unknown figures, one of my, uh, the teacher that's coming to mind is uh, Allama Akram Azhari Saab, who is a great scholar. He studied at Azhar. He did the whole course, the four or five year undergrad course over there. He's someone... Because I used to study one-on-one, and we used to study in a masjid next to his house uh, for a few hours. Sometimes he would come before me, and the way we would sit is there would be a seat for him, a chair for his books, a chair for my books, and then a seat for myself. So there would be four chairs. I would come early, I would set it all up, and then he would come afterwards. Some days he would come early, and I would come there, all the lights are on, all the chairs are set up. He has no expectation that as a student, I'm supposed to come and do all. He would do all of that himself. For me, that's a karama. Mm. For me, it's not him flying in air. But you, you see that amongst a lot of the, quote-unquote, the Sufis in, in America, the Sunnis, basically. Yeah. In America, a lot of the young guys, when they talk about awliya, the way they talk about it, it's mm. not what I experienced at all. Sometimes I'm sort of unsettled by how they talk about it. But it's very gritty. The yeah. self is gritty. It's not... Oh, it uh, takes a lot of work. I think... There's the, up and downs. Yeah. yeah. There, there, it, it's got to be different because when you have something like what you're saying, there's going to yeah. be a reaction. Yeah. I could say in the reaction Arab world... Reaction to what? There's going to be reaction to this nonsense. Oh, right? okay. So yeah. there's going to be a, 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 a distancing from that stuff. Mm-hmm. The In the Arab countries, there is a very little bit of that, right? Yeah. There is a little bit of that. Yeah. But... I'll tell you a funny story about there was an interview that we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. had to do with my wife's uh, research mm-hmm. in college, which required us to interview one of the shiuch of the Shadri order. Yeah. And of course, the Shadri has many different orders. Yeah. So, because her subject matter had a sheikh in this order, mm-hmm. right? Now we're on the sheikh's great-grandson, yeah. right? Great-grandson now. So we're like, we got to interview the sheikh. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, so we get in there, we, we, we get the contact, we get the interview, yeah. right, with the sheikh. And we get there, and it's a man, he's got a nice fancy watch on, complete shaved, yeah. right? Uh, regular shirt yeah. and pants, smoking a cigarette, right? Yeah. And he's wearing the tariqa sash, right? Yeah. And now here's the thing. As a regular Muslim... The guy was a regular Muslim. He was a good Muslim. Yeah. Like he'll pray five times a day. Far from ever being a sheikh. Mm-hmm. Right? Far. And he'll tell you that though. He'll just, yeah. he'll tell you that. He was honest enough to say that. No, no, no. We have some of the people that guide the murids mm-hmm. that are pious, right? Okay. But he happens to be the chairman of the tariqah. Yeah. That's really the best explanation. He's the chairman. Yeah. He's the inheritor of the bank yeah. accounts. Mm-hmm. Right? He did not inherit truly or learn how to guide the people. Mm-hmm. Right? Is not his yeah. position. Because to guide people, you got to study. Exactly. Studying is hard. You got to st- you got to you got to do ibadah. Yeah. To guide people. Yeah. Like you have to prove yourself in ibadah. Yeah, and not just ibadah to study. You have studying to have aqidah. Very fit. hard. That's the foundation. Especially of everything. living in a third world Muslim country yeah. and studying there. A yeah. lot of the students who go overseas, it's not easy. When so the final year I did at so I, I've been yeah. studying one on one, but the final year was Jami Nizamiya, yeah, Dawratul Hadith program. So I was enrolled in a madrasa this past year. And amongst the 230-something students in class, yeah. we had a wide variety of kids. Yeah. The vast majority of sons of great fathers who are scholars, none of them knew anything. Yeah. And sometimes in the hadith class, because it's such a huge class, the teachers sitting at the front can't see the people in the back. They would be lying down sleeping Subhanallah. during class. And I'm thinking in my head, this guy's going to become a beat or a sheikh afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the studious kid sitting in front those kids, they don't know how to play the game. Yeah. They're not as charismatic, but they're the real ones. Yeah. They're studying, they're humble in their character. What those kids become teachers. The kids all the way in the back, they become the, the chairman. The the, the faces yeah. of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'a in Pakistan, sadly. Okay, so it's how many peers though are there like a percentage that actually studied and became shiuch? Very few. I can't think of too many. Uh, yeah. Yeah, very, very few. I know one that I really like is Molana Ilyas Al Qadri, the head of the Daoud Islami movement. Yeah, he's great. He's someone who is also very learned. Uh, I don't know if he if he formally did a course, but he knows fiqh. He knows all of that. He teaches it as well. Uh, and he's someone who has a lot of scholars working underneath him. So he's an administrator. He's a 
great administrator as well. And he's a peer of the order. He's a peer as well, yeah. But, but you know that a peer, he has to have some connection with Allah. This is an unseen thing, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So someone who graduates as a faqih yeah. is not sufficient. Yeah. He has yeah. to, a, yeah. a peer has to have a lot of, he has to be a arif billah. Yeah. A arif billah happens when you do spend a lot of time in yeah. khalwa, yeah. in ibadah. But you can't determine that. It's, so can't for determine. The murid, that's why. You just got to look at signs. Yeah, that's why the only thing that we could do yeah. is just wait and look at the results. Yeah. Right? And stop this fake yep. thing going yep. on because yeah. you're distracting people by that. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so it's. Um, I don't. I'm surprised people don't want don't see through it. Uh, yeah, I used to be surprised, but now I'm not surprised. Most yeah. people are sheep. What can yeah, you do it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but you got to learn to be able to develop the ability to critically look at something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people don't people look at themselves too. I think it's like, sincerity of people that yeah. they get tricked because they really want to get into the religion. Yeah, and they see someone claiming, and then they think to themselves, "Okay, he's my ticket yeah. to salvation." So, but pe- pe- don't people look at um, there is like, am I changing? You know, like people don't think about that. Like ten years have passed. What have yeah. I really? Yeah. Have I changed? Have I drawn near to Allah? Am I? Is my behavior any different? People don't think about this stuff. It's ajib. Yeah, it's very ajib. Yeah. See, what makes sense for me as a tariqa, and 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 you can bring the camera here now. We'll still talk about this, but what makes sense to me about these orders is the idea and the concept where. There are social organizations, mm-hmm. and and that peer, he's sort of he has the function of being the brick that holds it all together, yeah. and the face of it, yeah. and the tariqa name is that, yeah. and the evening gatherings is what brings us together. Yeah. Because if you think about it, masajid in the old countries, they're they're not functions of community center. They don't function as community centers. Yeah. It's the zawiyas, yeah. the zawiyas is the community center, right? The zawiyah and the concept of a zawiyah is the idea that this is where a set a certain sheikh is ruling from, mm-hmm. right? He runs it, he's operating the thing, and um, it's his rules, and we're all coming because we share these beliefs, right? Mm-hmm. That might be the case for general Islamic beliefs in America, right? Yeah. But in the Islamic world, the mosque is just a big open public space. Yeah, it doesn't true. gather a specific group of people. Like if I go to a masjid in America, everyone I see there has put some effort to come here and only come here because they have a set of beliefs. Yeah. brings us together. You go to a masjid in the Arab world, the uh, Islamic world, doesn't really make much of it. Yeah. It's just a place of yeah. prayer. So the zawiya becomes a community center. Mm-hmm. So what I see, the, what I found of all these uh, turuq is that the social function that they have is very important. As, as community centers, sometimes they're hospitals, mm-hmm. sometimes, and, and I went to one, yeah. uh, the Jafariya. Yeah. Um, Sheikh. Uh, uh, From Egypt? Yeah, Sheikh, um, subhanAllah. Al Jafari. Yeah, yeah. Al Jafari. He was the Sheikh of Azar. Saleh Al Jafari. Yes, uh, so, the book that we were reading, uh, oh. uh, Mr. Shaban, wasn't it written by him? Yes, it yeah, was his him. Maqam was it is Saleh? By... SubhanAllah Razim. I think it's Saleh. It's, it's right by, yeah. by Azhar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went there. Again, the sheikh did not seem that he was somebody who um, was in heavy in this world of ilm and ibad. He did mm-hmm. not seem like that because he was like the great grandson. They were singing the qasidas. He's sitting at the head of the gathering. They're singing the qasidas, and then they pray Aisha. Sheikh Salih Hajar. Then they pray Aisha, and then the food comes out. And then the people go to the sheikh for different like needs. That's him, yeah. Mm-hmm. They come to him for different needs, not spiritual needs. Mm-hmm. Like um, so-and-so is wanting to get married. He said, okay, this is what you do. This is how you do it. He's experienced. He's like a veteran of life. Yeah. He knows certain things. So I felt that was pretty good, right? He's a murabbi. He, he's a basic murabbi. Yeah. doesn't always have to be the master Sufi sheikh yeah. that's going to guide you to the highest maqamats in the world. Mm-hmm. He just guides you to regular righteousness, yeah. right? So I find that to be functional in the society they had a hospital right next door yeah. right yeah. they had the women gathering upstairs because yeah. the message they had a balcony the women gathered upstairs overlooked the men's balcony uh, men's area and then one time in the week every week they serve meat yeah. and this is a big deal in egypt right i think it's a big deal even, even in, New in Jersey. Pakistan, yeah. uh, a lot of the peas they do a lot of langar which is basically food drives throughout the week. So they, I'm telling they you, do that's, do that. they do that's the salvation of it. And if you could, if you had a tariqa where 
if you to, to fix these things, mm -hmm. lead the people to righteousness. Everyone should know their fardain. Yeah. One or two of them should become fuqaha. Yeah. You're the chairman of the tariqah. Stop saying sheikh tariqah, right? Yep. Say chairman of the tariqah. Yeah. You have now received all this land and this huge zawiya. You're the manager mm -hmm. of this. This is a. This is okay. not your personal money. This is a waqf. It's an endowment, it's right? It's in their personal accounts. <laughs> it's not your personal... It is the, usually there is. It's yeah, their, it's in their uh, personal accounts. Well, it shouldn't be. Yeah. It should be an endowment, At right? At least how I've seen it. Yeah, it should be an endowment. Guide the people to Fardain. Uh, it becomes a social place for people to see, meet each other, get married. It becomes a place where they eat at least once a week. Mm. And we get to see who's falling into poverty. We can give them sadaqah. Yeah. We give zakat to the poor of the community. And there is a medical clinic. Like the ja Salah al-Jafari's place, it has a medical clinic, which mm. is amazing. It's, it's a hospital. So there's food, there's curing, there's friendship, there's basic ibadah, basic deen. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Forget this yeah. claim of the big... Mashiach, and we're going to go to the maqam and your soul is going to be out of your body yeah. and you're going to be swimming around the malakut al-a'la. Yeah. Remove not that all easy. this. That stuff it's to me is from easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Just be salih. Imam al-Haddad, he said, the tariqah in the end of time is to be ashab al-yameen. Muqarrabeen, mm -hmm. that's something between people and Allah. Very few will have that, right? So, uh, just be from the ashab al-yameen. And that's what I think that these orders... Are, and the sheikh becomes like, as I said, chairman. Doesn't necessarily mean he's the most righteous, the most best to guide. He mm -hmm. just happens to be in that position of respectability yeah. because he came there first or because it's from his father and best to, to not even be related to the father. So like what we're doing here is most similar to Azawiya. Yeah. The mess, MBIC is a public mosque. Mm -hmm. It has certain roles to it, right? And it's, it's a jam out of the community. It gathers everyone for the community, right? The personnel that will support that mosque need to be cooked well mm -hmm. in specialized classes, right? In more intensive ibadah that is not suitable to happen at the mosque, right? That's the zawiya. We want to be, as you can see here, it's not a rich area. Mm -hmm. We want to be here yeah. feeding. I think it's a great tarbiya for our students that they're involved in the soup kitchen. Yeah. And I was thinking for a long time, that one of our goals is to, to eventually have a nice sprawling campus where the land is cheap. I'm sort of not even seeing that right anymore. Unless the thing becomes massive, which I don't think is going to become massive. You open up a ma'had, a, a, a madrasa for sharia studies, you're not going to have a line out the door, right? So I actually think it's, a new, it's something that we've never seen before, where you study, you're directly involved in feeding the poor, and in dawah. These people need dawah, right? Direct. And then you have the local masjid is literally, we could take a jog to MBIC. Any jogger can jog to MBIC, mm -hmm. to the masjid. And you could, or you could drive it in, what do you think, five minutes? Seven minutes. Seven minutes? If, it depends on how lane, right? Yeah, if how lane. Five minutes for the rest of us. <laughs> if, and if how lane, if how lane is, is, in, is traffic y, it's a disaster, right? <laughs> but <laughs> terrible. <laughs> how lane is a disaster. But if Hal Lane is clear and empty, you can get there pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So there's the. I think these two institutions are so important. Yeah. And the Islamic world in the past has shown that. Yeah. Where you have the public mosque where everything goes on, but the specialization, the cooking of the people cannot always happen there, mm -hmm. right? Because you need specialized setups, specialized time, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, no interruptions, mm -hmm. okay? And also the Dawa element needs to be on site you go far away and claiming to do, how are you going to do dawah if you have a nice sprawling farm and a nice beautiful okay how are you going to do dawah but here you do dawah any day you just have to learn spanish right you come for a st study today you got to learn arabic you want to give dawah you got to learn spanish right so um el Sar the saracen asked the question not to start polemics but what do you think of the statement that Hamza Yusuf made a while back that the murid sheikh relationship is no longer suitable for current time uh, and is now extinct. I actually don't think it's extinct if you have a real sheikh. I, I think it's better to be without a sheikh than a bad sheikh. Uh, no sheikh is better than a false sheikh because you're yeah. wasting your time. But yeah. if you happen to come upon a real sheikh yeah. who you see the tarbiyah happening yeah. and 
he actually is a sheikh, right? Well, allow it to happen organically. That's exactly what it is. This idea of I'm going to search and look for it, I don't always buy it. It always because doesn't work it, like that. Because then you're probably going to see something in someone that's not there. Yeah. Because you're trying so hard. I, I never went out looking for a sheikh. Yeah. Right? I never went out looking for a sheikh. Mm-hmm. I ended up having, alhamdulillah, bifadlillah, a long, decades mm-hmm. relationship with a sheikh who I really believe is a real sheikh, yeah. right? And But there was never a formality to it. Like, I never sought that, and it was never bought upon me, mm-hmm. right? It was just do your ibad, do the afghar, do this yeah. thick, do this yeah. thick. And I see different results, yeah. right? In a way that, and then uh, that makes me have a strong faith in this, yeah. this shaykh, he's going to guide me to something good. Mm-hmm. So, is it something that you can just seek out? Mm-hmm. Like you said, you might start seeing something that you want to see rather yeah. than something that's real. Mm-hmm. Let it happen organically. That's the best thing. Let, just let it happen organically. And then let's wait. After 10 years, you start seeing results. Yeah. Honestly, my thing these days is let's get out of the weeds of ideas and just wait for the results, mm-hmm. right? The results speak for themselves. Yeah. So th- I always wondered why does Allah allow the uh, kufr to, 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 to grow? Mm-hmm. Like why the British Empire did all that damage, right? Why did Allah allow this when we know it's wrong? Because human beings don't learn by what's right and wrong. They learn by the results. Right? Like, why is it that communism mm. is not going to happen again? Because it happened and it was terrible. Failed. Miserable. It failed mm-hmm. at the biggest level. Right? Yeah. It's never gonna ha- We're never going to do it again. <laughs> we touched it. Oh, the, human, the, the collective of human beings touched it and it hurt. Uh-huh. It was nice in the beginning and it got, uh-huh. then it burned you afterwards. Never going to touch it again. Right? Um, let's just wait and see what's going to happen with all these other movements and we're seeing it how it's destroying families the lgbt movement's destroying families let's see how let's see the result right uh, uh, how about will there ever be a religion that comes out and says men do not marry anymore right our priests don't marry i don't think so mm-hmm. we've seen the result yeah. like look at the the catholic experiment yeah. that's just disrespect them cuz they are let's say we have to we owe them some respect as a, another religion um as Ahl al-Kitab, but that idea, no one's going to buy it again. Mm-hmm. It's resulted in something really warped, yep. really bad, right? I mean, to do zina is less than to ruin this boy's life forever. And some of these priests, 10, 12, 13, 15 boys, 20 boys. Like, if a priest been been on the job in a certain place for 40 years... How many shabab went through him and he destroyed them, right? So, if that guy had done zina, isn't it less, right? No. It's, so, human beings have to do stuff. The transgender, it has to run its course. And they will get everything they want. They have done it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have believed it. But they've done it. They've completely transformed the body and the hormones of a, of a dude, made him a woman. A woman made her a dude. Yeah. There is a dude, a dude freaking makes you want to vomit he's breastfeeding his baby what? <laughs> he's biologically a dude this dude he impregnates his wife we're normal at this point he becomes a woman during the pregnancy okay he becomes a woman during the pregnancy he's lactating and he's breastfeeding his kid do they also lose their organs i i don't I have no oh you don't know how, how they do it works. there's different ways to do it different ways to do it there is a way where he's just dressing as a woman yeah there is a way where he takes the hormones and there is a way where he takes the hormones and he cuts himself off really he cuts off his dhakar subhanallah and I guess they slice him no, they how do they make they, subhanallah like it's even take the mic for this podcast. take the mic yeah, yeah that sounds, sounds like origami <laughs> Like, I, I won't say any more, but, yeah. you know, if you actually, you can find these, um, like, the medical explanations. To uh, make a man a woman? Yeah, and vice versa as well. It's horrible, and not just that, they have gaping wounds for the rest of their lives. Yeah. So many of them, they have such regret, where they say that my doctor misled me, everyone misled me, my guidance you counselor. You misled yourself. Yeah. Self accountability. These That's are exactly. the, the, the trans will never put them up, these guys. They are the murtads of the trans community. He's worse than us, yeah. those mm-hmm. types. No, to make a bint, a woman, a guy, they take skin from like the leg or the back and they make a dhakar and they attach to it a hole, okay, and they put a plastic tube inside that hole. Now, in order to engage in uh, uh, jima, they give him a pump. 
so that it hardens, right? Wow. Can you believe this? And they're on medications and they have so many yeah. complications for the rest of their lives. You know, some of them, like, um, I forgot which one to which, like, male to female or female to yeah. male. But what they have to do is that they have to take, like, the skin or, like, the cells. I forgot, really. But from, like, where, like, from where you use a bathroom, right? The, that's, like, those skin cells where they're doing their grafts from, mm. they're going to be producing that smell. And it's, like, part of it, right? Because, it's like, you know, your colon, basically, from what I remember, you know, I have, I'm not a doctor. Uh, but what I remember, Soon to be inshallah. 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 Um, but like what I remember is that like they have to make grafts and extensions to your colon itself. Your uh, colon is not a pleasant thing that you want to be in any part of yes. your body except where Allah put it. That's true because it's releasing odor. It it releases an odor. It's permeable and you know whatnot. Allah, uh, Allah, Allah, the doctors would be able to tell much better. Yeah. But like they regret it so much for the rest of their lives that some of them commit suicide. So why do you think that trans people have the highest rates of suicide in the world? After. It's after too. Of course after it's after. SubhanAllah. It's both before and after. SubhanAllah. So what wow. we see is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so the human being. I so, didn't know this. Oh, this it's really bad. bad. It, you don't even want to go. Like there's Reddit forums where yeah. they talk about these things. Yeah. And it's just so, you feel bad for them. Yeah. Really. Yeah. But and it's sad to be part of this experiment. And and but what happens is that what human beings want, eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow you so that you could all see for yourself. Mm. And then when that experiment goes and reaches its conclusion, whether mm. it's twenty years, fifty years, or two hundred years. Now if you notice, the certain religions have some truth to them so they last longer. So mm. this idea that the monasticism that monasticism is really bad for humanity at large and we don't want to come near it mm. well, it took a long time mm. right because there's a lot of good that the catholic church does and this stuff is embedded in it mm -hmm. so it's going to take a long time it so the goodness will carry it for a long time mm. Mm. until the people say Khalas, enough is enough and some things are more evil is more evil to it so very quickly mm. humanity will see this experiment like communism very quickly no a hundred years this thing lasted as a state mm. i said to the people if you had a brain, wouldn't you want to do a communist town first? Don't, wouldn't you want to do a beta version before going <laughs> national national level, right? Prototype. Like, let's do a communist. How about a communist family? Like, if you came and, and, and the dad took all your stuff, right? And said, but it's all, nobody owns anything. This family's not going to work, right? Do a communist town, right? And say, all right, all you guys, you don't own stuff anymore. Your home, your property is not yours. See what kind of fights are going to happen. Fix it at the beta level once it's good. But no, these are they're stupid. They did it all at the national level right away. Yeah. Took a whole bunch of land from a bunch of farmers. Pissed them the heck off, right? So now you got an angry populace. And that wound, it never really healed. They did the same thing in the Arab world. They nationalized an entire industry. So let's say five, six, seven companies, they run an industry. He stole all their money? He just stole the company from them? Mm. I know a guy, listen to this. He's a, com he's a son of converts. His dad and his uncle, after World War II, or no, sorry, his, his grandfather and his grandfather's brother, after World War II, were so jaded by life. They said, we want to get as far away as we can. Okay? It's the, sorry, just the grandfather. The grandfather, he said, I want to get as far away as I can. Where does he go? Tangiers. He goes Tangiers in the 60s is a wild place, mm. right? And this guy sees a world, Morocco, he's never seen before. He falls in love with it. He lives there permanently. He marries a Moroccan woman. He becomes a Muslim. He has now two sons. Mm -hmm. He ends up being, guess, guess what shows up around the 40s, 50s, 60s in Morocco? Coca-Cola, right? Looking for anyone to speak English. A guy speaks English, mm. right? He's Irish. Until today, the kids are all redheads. Uh, <laughs> he speaks English. They're like, hey, finally, someone who speaks English. You be our distributor. You got a good brain, you speak English. So he's the Coca-Cola distributor. Now, they don't know how big it's going to get. Mm -hmm. And you know how the Arabs are in love with their Coke, yeah. right? Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. He becomes extremely rich as the sole distributor of Coca-Cola mm -hmm. in Morocco first, then West Africa. So Islam brought him all those riches. Islam brought him all those <laughs> riches, right? So... You know about Coke, I remember one of my teachers that I studied from 
the 2007-8. His name's Kazi Muzaffar Iqbal. So. Yep. His father was the Khalifa of Imam Ahmad Adal Khan. He was telling me, he said, I remember when Coke and Pepsi and all these beverages were introduced in the market. He said the people hated it. Yeah. It and hurts, right? <laughs> he says it tastes horrible. Yeah. Here we have these sweet drinks, Ruavza, yeah, and yeah. all of this other stuff. And now we have this. It was immediately rejected. Yeah. And then he said what they did is the way they marketed it. That's all it is. Yeah. Is this is the drink for the wealthy people oh, or okay. for when you have guests come over. I see. Okay. When you have a guest come over, this is what you give. You I don't see. give the other stuff. Yeah. You give them quality, top Co- money material. Psst. And he said, now people can't live without it. They can't it, live without it. Objectively, it tastes bad. Yeah. Coke doesn't taste G- good. Give it to any kid, baby, for the first time. For see sure. the reaction. It's yeah. funny, actually. Yeah. Now, uh, Morocco comes in uh-huh. and says, hey, this company is pretty nice. We're nationalizing. What does oh, nationalizing yeah. mean? The, it's a government takeover of my business. Yeah. yeah. So the government forcibly took over his business, gave him like a share, made him a board member. You have a chair and you have some shares in the mm-hmm. company and that's it. And you don't have to work. Just come in, come into your office with a nice suit, say okay on the board meeting and mm-hmm. that's it. So it was two sons now. The next generation was running it when this happened. Mm-hmm. One son had a lot of shares. The other son hardly had any shares. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what the other son did? He's like, well, I'm a good seller because we're selling Coca-Cola. Mm-hmm. I have no, no job now. The guy, he said, what do we have in Morocco that I could sell that Europe wants? Hash. The guy became one of the biggest marijuana, Moroccan hash dealers Mm -hmm. in Europe. All right? Selling marijuana Mm -hmm. in Europe. So this theft has led to so much haram. Mm -hmm. Because nobody stops at marijuana. Mm -hmm. Marijuana, then heroin, then crack, etc. So anyway, humans have to do their experiments. Okay. Uh, let's stop with to, for Q and A. I had a question. Yes, go ahead. Someone texted this to me when they were watching the stream. Yeah, Q and A, then Dua. By the way, we're doing Dua. It's Wednesdays. He we're was doing saying Dua. that one of the criticisms for this player, um, he, like he's he's refusing to do the um, wear the flag of the LGBT uh, alphabet community. Yeah. But in the past, the, you know, they've had like gambling and you know, like alcohol and things like that. And he has had no problems with wearing that yeah. in the past. So um, I guess the question is, is that, isn't that hypocritical? It's not hypocritical. It's just incomplete. Yeah. So I don't know if you all heard Oz's question that uh, Idris Gay, he, he, he has worn alcohol and gambling on his shirts, but not Qom Lutz. I don't know of any city in the Quran that was destroyed for drinking alcohol mm-hmm. or for gambling, right? But... Yeah, so they are sins, but he, so he's incomplete. Yeah. Are, are you complete, Mr. Critic? Mm. Right? So, I have a question. Yeah. So, if somebody's like in the spot like, like that <clears throat> and they're a Muslim, yes. Do they, and, you know, a lot of people see them as, like, don't, maybe the only Muslim that they know of. Like Who? Some, some random kid might be like, oh, Muslim, oh, you talk about the soccer player? Yeah. Because that's the only Muslim they know. Oh, okay, so yeah. Do they have that responsibility that someone who is, like, very learned in the deen would have because of the, like, spotlight that they're in? Or does their responsibility of just, like, some layman guy? No, in the Sharia, we do hold that it's not, a sh- like, a Sharia position, but the scholars do talk about sarf al um, what do I, what's the word they use? But they have to utilize their position that Allah gave them. They do have a responsibility. Like mm-hmm. someone say, Muhammad Salah. Yeah. We would say, first of all, your occupation in the first place is different upon. Mm-hmm. Regardless, you are now a very famous Muslim athlete, Karim Benzema. Right? People are looking at you. Just from that, you do have, you will be held to a degree higher accountability than everybody else, of course. Yeah. People will act based upon you, right? Mm-hmm. Or they're, they'll all be inspired based upon you. So it's one of those things where you shouldn't aspire to that, but if you have it now, you have to act upon it. And they told, I remember a sheikh, I think an Egyptian sheikh gave Muhammad Ali this advice. Mm-hmm. He said, we would never tell a Muslim to go become a boxer, a famous boxer, but now that you are, yeah. now you have responsibility. Yeah. There's certain things you don't do, and that's why you know this in the Sharia, certain things, the beginnings have one ruling, the end has another ruling, yeah. right? Like if a, if a girl com- is, wants to go commit zina with a dude, wouldn't we all stop her? Right? You're, you, you stop your daughter. Your daughter wants to go commit zina. No. 
now that she has done it and is pregnant, now we have to take care of the baby. Yeah. So the Sharia has a difference, differentiates between what happens at the beginning and how we treat the end. Mm-hmm. So that's an example and, of that. And everyone's responsible to know the fiqh of whichever position they're in. A yeah. doctor got to know the fiqh of his job. Yeah. A businessman who's selling meat got to know the fiqh of the bihar. Exactly, not. yeah. So similarly in this yeah. case. All right, there's a lot of comments on uh, YouTube, more so than um, than Instagram today. Okay. So there's a lag to this. No, just a very minor lag. Oh, okay, okay. 20 second delay. Oh, okay. Can one become a wali at any age? Allah chooses awliya. But we can work for it. Yeah. We definitely have to work for it. But see, th- these are the questions that strike me as odd. Yeah. Can one become a wali at a certain age? Because you don't know the state the person is going to die in. So we shouldn't That's see people true. say he's a wali. We also do not say <laughs> that um, we believe that w- wilaya can be removed from somebody. Yeah. Right. Like no one's, you know, one's locked in a position. Mm-hmm. You could lose it. So, because what's greater, iman or wilaya? Iman, iman of course. Right. Yeah. Uh, you can lose your iman. Yeah. So you could lose your wilaya. But also, when there, Allah Ta'ala would not give us a, a something to shoot for, a status to shoot for, without giving us how to shoot for it and the signs of somebody mm-hmm. who possesses it. Yeah. So there are alamat al-iman, there are alamat al-nifaq, mm. there are alamat al-wilaya. Mm-hmm. Right? From hadith al-tawadu, or also known as hadith al-wilaya, some call it, some call it hadith al-tawadu, yeah. right? Man adali waliyan. There are a lot of descriptions there. Mm-hmm. If a person possesses that, you max you can say is, we hope that he is fulfilled wilay because he has those signs in them, yeah. right? That's husnudhan. Uh, husnudhan billah. Yeah. Husnudhan with that person. With that person. Yeah. All right. So, um, is it okay for a murshid to ask their murid to bring them sugar-free chocolates and honey every time you travel abroad? The sheikh gave you one of Allah's names to recite and salawat. On the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, now he and he said, "Be nice to everyone and say salam to everyone, and come back and bring me sugar-free chocolate and honey." I, I mean, sometimes mubah. it's mubah. It's I don't think he's charging you, right? He's saying, "I'll teach you a dhikr if you give me chocolate." Maybe he's just, you know, uh, yeah, something that's innocent, I guess. Be, getting a tajalli from Allah subhanahu wa taala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could give his signs to anybody he wants. Allah can give a sign to anybody he, he, he desires. Mu'min, waliullah. This is why we follow the way of the salaf and that ha- as they have passed away, correct. So Sarkodi is saying something very important. When we talk about ulama, there are those who passed away already and those who are alive. Those who passed away, they we saw their death. Yeah. That's very important. Those who are still alive, we still don't know their state. They might... Fumble. Okay. Khala White says, things happen in your life and you drifted away from being in contact with the Shaykh after he asked you for those chocolates. Allahu Alam about what you're gonna do. Eat them before they rot. In the name of in the name of the Shaykh. La <laughs> Yeah. Don't waste the chocolate. Yeah. Inna Allah la All right, folks, let us stop here and turn to our dua. Uh, three, all right, three minutes. Can we talk for three minutes? Huh? All right, forget it then. Right. Forget it this week, next week, do it. We'll just recite the... Uh... When does this end? We're going to end right now. Oh, because i got to pick up my brother. Yeah, we're going to end right now. And uh, we're just going to recite a dua because it, it is Wednesday and... Um, we act upon a hadith here that is from Jabir ibn Abdullah. Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah said that during the battle of uh, Khandaq, mm-hmm. the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had went to a certain area, okay, and he had made dua for the victory against Khandaq on Monday. Then he made dua on Tuesday, mm-hmm. and then he made dua on Wednesday. On Wednesday, between Dhuhr and Asr, 
that's when he, the time was. Mm. He had made dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the bishara that his dua will be answered. And then the wind came and it took away. Mm-hmm. It destroyed the campments, mm-hmm. encampment of Ahl al Khandaq, mm-hmm. right? The, uh, the Ahzab. Mm-hmm. And the, so Sayyidina Jabir said, فَاسْتُجِيبَ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْأَرْبِعَاءِ بَيْنَ الصَّلَاتَيْنِ بَيْنَ الظُّهْرِ وَالْعَصْرِ وَعُلِمَ الْبِشْرُ فِي وَجْهِهِ mm-hmm. Okay? Subhanallah. And then he says, um, I then continued, I'll get you the Arabic exactly. Mm-hmm. He said, I then continued to make dua at that time. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, he says exactly, his word was, فَاسْتُجِيبَ لَهُ يَوْمَ فعرف البشر في وجهي قال جابر فلم ينزل بي أمر مهم غليظ إلا توخيت تلك الساعة except I look for that hour between ظهر and عصر فأدعو فيها فأعرف الإجابة and he said he himself as well a sign would come to him okay a sign would come to him now just in case for the Salafiyah in case someone has a Salafi background and says, this is all da'if, blah, blah, blah. Ibn Taymiyyah himself, he has commentary on this. Mm-hmm. Where he himself says he has, he, it is to be acted upon. We know people who act upon it and they have seen ijab as well. So just to give you the most utter edge of the, if you want to say that that's the cautious way, mm-hmm. right? To give you that, he upholds it, mm-hmm. Right? If you, and you can look it up. And all of the... We, we know that we are allowed to act upon these hadith. And so... And I can tell you other people living, alive today, have had um, experience mm-hmm. where they make this dua and it's mustajab in this hour. And they are shown a alama of their istijaba. Mm-hmm. Subhanallah. So that's why we want to revive this time. And we're just going to do the dua here. Mm-hmm. Inshallah. Should I start, guys? In a minute, so. But I, 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 I'll, I'll take a couple questions on this before we start, inshallah, because we're going to, um, we're going to play or not play, but we're going to present the short du'a that we're going to read here, and then we're going to have a silent du'a for everybody that everyone can, Amen. can do. And in the meantime, we'll begin with some salah on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل صلاه كامله وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتم ويستسقى الغمام بوجه الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد مفتاح باب رحمة الله عدد ما في علم الله صلاة وسلاما دائمين بدوام ملك الله وعلى آله وصحبه اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتم ويستسقى الغمام بوجه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتم ويستسقى الغمام بوجه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه to give you the English before we continue oh Allah send complete blessings and perfect salam upon our master Muhammad through whom problems are solved knots are undone tribulations are alleviated by through this messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and through salah upon him needs are fulfilled hopes and good ends are attained and by whose countenance the clouds are wet moistures moistened with rain meaning the rizq will come down and likewise upon his family and companions allahumma salli salatan kamila wa sallim salaman tamman ala sayyidina muhammad alladhi tanhallu bihi al-'uqd wa tanfarij bihi al-kurab wa tuqda bihi al-hawaij wa tunal bihi al-raghaib وحسن الخواتم ويستسقى الغمام بوجه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب 
وحسن الخواتم ويستسقى الغمام بوجه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتم ويستسقى الغمام بوجه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم We ready to start the word? This is uh, my brother, right? Huh? This is uh, my brother. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. La ilaha illallahu al fatahna laka fatham mubina. Diyabfur laka Allahu ma taqaddama min dambika wa ma taakhar. ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا وكان عند الله وجيها وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين وجهت وجهي للذي فطر السماوات والأرض بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نصر من الله وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا أنصار الله كما قال عيسى بن مريم للحواريين من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يبوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم أعيد نفسي بالله تعالى من كل ما يسمع بأذنين ويبصر بعينين ويمشي برجلين ويبطش بيدين ويتكلم بشفتين حصنت نفسي بالله الخالق الأكبر من شر ما أخاف وأحذر من الجن والإنس وأن يحضرون عز جاره وجل ثناؤه وتقدست أسماؤه ولا إله غيره اللهم إني أجعلك في نحور أعدائي وأعوذ بك من شرورهم وتحيلهم ومكرهم ومكائدهم أطفي النار من أراد بي عداوة من الجن والإنس يا حافظ يا حفيظ يا كافي يا محيط سبحانك يا رب ما أعظم شأنك وأعز سلطانك تحصنت بالله وبأسماء الله وبآيات الله وملائكة الله وأنبياء الله ورسل الله والصالحين من عباد الله حصنت نفسي بلا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم احرسني بعينك التي لا تنام اللهم احرسني بعينك التي لا تنام واكنفني بكنفك الذي لا يرام وارحمني بقدرتك علي فلا أهلك وأنت ثقتي ورجائي يا غياث المستغيثين يا غياث المستغيثين يا غياث المستغيثين يا درك الهالكين يا درك الهالكين يا درك الهالكين اكفني شر كل طارق يطرق بليل او نهار الا طارق يطرق بخير انك على كل شيء قدير بسم الله أرقي نفسي من كل ما يؤذي ومن كل حاسد الله شفائي بسم الله رقيت اللهم رب الناس أذهب الباس اشفي أنت الشافي وعافي أنت المعافي لا شفاء إلا شفاء شفاء لا يغادر سقما ولا ألما يا كافي يا وافي يا حميد يا مجيد ارفع عني كل تعب شديد واكفني من الحد والحديد والمرض الشديد والجيش العديد واجعل لي نورا من نورك وعزا من عزك ونصرا من نصرك وبهاء من بهائك وعطاء من عطائك وحراسة من حراستك وتأييدا من تأييدك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام والمواهب العظام أسألك أن تكفيني من شر كل ذي شر إنك أنت الله الخالق الأكبر وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والحمد لله رب العالمين ظاهرا وباطنا وعلى كل حال يا أرحم الراحمين إن شاء الله everybody will now do our individual dua for two three minutes
ولدنا بعد الخلق ولدى نفسي وزنة عرش مداد كلمات سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين For all those asking about the dua where they can find the link Download, look up an app called Kulasa App, okay, and then go to the dua after Dhuhr Okay, it's a dua that's after Dhuhr It's also called Hizb al-Nasr by Imam al-Haddad Hizb al-Nasr by Imam al-Haddad And that will be one of our staples uh, for our Wednesday dua, dua Insha'Allah Ta'ala, ta'ala. And, and we did, did it, it and, and I rushed, rushed the team as, as I always do, do. Put them, put them on the, on the spot, spot today, today that they have, they have to, get to get it done, it done on, on the OBS, OBS software, software to get it on the stream. stream. And, that's and that's why we had a little bit, bit but they'll, they'll figure, they'll, they'll get, get it done, done right next time, time uh, when they when actually have time, time to do it. it. As, as opposed to uh, uh, when, when I tell Ryan after, after we started the stream that he has to do it. And he did his best doing it. But inshallah ta'ala, we will have it a clear side by side showing the awrad. We will also do Salat al Kamila a number of times. And we will have some ayat of Quran. Uh, from Surah Al-Fatih بإذن الله تعالى صلاة الكاملة حزب النصر private dua inshallah ta'ala جزاكم الله خيرا everyone for joining and thank you Ryan and Oz for obliging uh, me on the spot like that subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik and also saying thank you to our Shaykh and Ustad he's now the Ustad of Hanafi Fiqh and he's also Ustad of Aqidah in uh, for the Mahad that we're starting here inshallah ta'ala uh, Sheikh Nisar, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, Nushadu an la ilaha illa anta, Nastaghfirk wa natubu ilayk wal asr, Inna al-insana lafi khusr, Illa al-ladhina amanu, Wa amilu salihat, Wa tawasaw bil-haq, Wa tawasaw bil-sabr, Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.